Hi, welcome to the 3D Pendant. In the previous video, we made a simple cube in four different ways. If you missed this one, the link is in the description. Today, we'll look at how to truncate that cube, which means we'll just snip the corners off. Why on earth would you want to truncate a cube? You may ask. To get more design options, of course. The first obvious way to go about it is to make a cube, mark the same distance from each corner and then bridge between those points. Except that sometimes it sags and that looks super messy. We can avoid that by connecting the points on a solid surface with a ruler and then proceed to edit the corner out. But it is an awful lot of work for just one corner and we have seven more to go. So let's do this the easy way. We'll use the same equipment as we did for making the cube in the previous video. Just a simple piece of wood with a perpendicular wire stuck in it. Then of course you will also need a hole in your work surface. I use plexiglass sprayed with matte acrylic finish. Now I will truncate the cube the easiest possible way by truncating the pattern. As with the cube we'll need to connect the shape to the middle axis at at least two points. So I will throw one diagonal in here. You can opt for all of them, but I'm planning to edit the connecting lines out later, so the bare minimum will do. Now, as with the cube, we will need something to establish a 90 degree angle between the faces one and two. Stabilize it so it stays put and connect the first face to the center wire. Again, just two points will do. And they don't even have to be on a diagonal. Any old pizza slice will do. And then continue from what's already there onto the perpendicular plane until the phase two is done. From now on, you don't need the wooden block anymore. The shape is already 3D, so just continue around aligning the structure to your pattern to complete one corner. are completed, you will start threading the structure onto the centering wire to keep the opposite faces perfectly aligned. At this point you can stop connecting the new faces to the center. We already have all the supports we need, even though here I did make another one for a good measure. However, since I'm going to edit them out, I just made more work for myself. As with the cube, we'll need six faces, even though the resulting shape will have 14 faces. Six square ones and eight triangular ones. And the more faces, the more fun we can eventually have with the design. 
I will stop connecting the outline to the center because for one it's getting harder to reach and two we really don't need it on the last three faces. my sixth face but before I take it off the surface I will edit out the diagonal support lines. Here is our truncated cube and if you are thinking well those triangles are really not that big you can definitely make them bigger. As you cut off bigger triangles at the corners, there comes a point where whatever is left of the side of the original square equals the side of the triangle and your square face becomes a perfect octagon. Now how cool is that? This time I will make all the diagonals and add a few extra lines here and there. to create sort of a windmill pattern. Mind in which direction you join the first face to keep it consistent around the cube. I guess I will opt for an X direction and keep it going in that way all around. it gets a bit hard to reach. So make your corner first and attach the rest of the structure to it. Or make two corners first as needed until the last face when you need to make all four corners first and then you are done no editing necessary or you can cut off the corners even more so much that there is nothing left from the four sides of the original cube except four points where the triangles touch in the middle of the original sides. You get a much smaller square sitting on one corner and really big triangles. This one looks so different that it got its own name cube octahedron. This is the plain minimalistic version of the cube octahedron. But I'm going to dress it up with a star inside each of the six square faces. Since the holiday season is coming, you can have your geometry lesson double up as a Christmas tree ornament or the other way around. Have your Christmas tree ornament double up as a geometry lesson. Since this one is sitting on just one point, make sure you attach the first face pointing straight up and not crooked or it won't work right. Just check that the central diagonal line is either aligned or parallel to the edge of the support block. And then continue from that point as usual. Pretty cool. 
school, even if you ignore the geometry lesson. Speaking of ignoring rules, you can also cut the corners in any way you wish and see what happens. Here, where all the loose sides are, are the sides of the original square. And the opposite solid corner is the center of the pattern. We'll need a tiny hole there. And then I'll just cut the corners wherever, at whatever angle. And let's see what we get. Aha! Uh -huh. Instead of a straight triangle side, we get this angled line corner. Hmm. So let's see how that would work out, connected to the middle with a few creative extras. I think we have another Christmas ornament. Or is it just a cool truncated cube? Cutting corners can be a lot of fun if you put your mind to it. So until next time, go and cut some corners. <laughs>